lot of talk over the past few years about investing in Pokemon cards and being a Pokemon card investor. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know a whole lot about it. I, I really just, I don't. I get questions all the time about what product uh, should I buy to hold? What product would give me the best return? I, I don't know. Honestly, I just don't know. We have no idea what's going to happen in the next five years, the next 10 years. We have no idea where the market is going to shape up. And I think there's a lot of people who are very intelligent when it comes to the idea behind Pokemon card investing. I'm not going to sit here and bash anybody who enjoys investing in Pokemon cards because I do think that there is a space for everybody within the Pokemon hobby and as long as you're doing something that makes you really happy uh, that's all that I really care about that's all that that's all that matters to me but when it comes to the idea of investing in Pokemon cards it's just not something that I know a whole lot about the market is so volatile obviously we've seen the market go crazy over the past couple of months and a lot of that is is different I think uh, then Pokemon card investing because those are pump and dumps, those are manipulation, those are things where people are buying uh, extremely low, selling extremely high right away, then uh, maybe rinsing and repeating and doing all that stuff. But I have seen some videos lately uh, that have popped up in my feed about mistakes that Pokemon card investors made. Uh, and some of them really are pointing to the idea that celebrations, the Pokemon celebration set, was a mistake to invest a bunch of money in. And while I understand the whole concept, the whole ideology of uh, celebrations, Celebrations, not producing the same returns as what you would get from something like Evolving Skies. I think the focus and the whole the whole mindset of getting something, getting this giant return right away, uh, it just seems it seems very dangerous, doesn't it? It just seems very dangerous because when you look at things historically in Pokemon, and I understand things have changed. Obviously, the market is driven by demand, and demand is driven a lot by different factors like uh, uh, content creators and uh, the the amount of attention that is being paid to a specific set. But when you see stuff like Lost Origin and Brilliant Stars go out of stock, Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike on the Pokemon Center website, and then things blow up overnight because there's so much attention being paid to it, I don't know if that's necessarily Pokemon card investing or just kind of right place, right time, taking advantage of the market, things like that. When I think of Pokemon card investing or any investment in general, I'm thinking of like long-term success, long-term growth, continued growth, where you don't really want these giant upswings uh, in prices, these giant fluctuations right away because to me, that makes things very volatile. And like I said, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know what I'm talking about. When I look at a set like Celebrations and I think, okay, yeah, it's been very stagnant for the past couple of years. And that's what we're going to focus on in today's video. We also have to remember the set is not even three years old yet. The set came out two years and nine months ago. We are smack dab in between our 25th anniversary and our 30th anniversary. And the idea of knowing what's going to come in the future, you, I mean, we have no idea what could happen with the 30th anniversary set and that could cause a giant shift in, in how celebrations... And when I'm looking at things like from a long-term standpoint, I'm thinking, well, Celebrations has so many great cards in it. It has so many great stories behind it. And you look at sets like Evolving Skies, and yeah, if you would have put money in Evolving Skies, that would have made you a much, much bigger return. Uh, but then the whole idea of diversifying, like there's just so much confusion uh, to go behind the whole Pokemon card investing uh, idea. And that's why I don't get into it. That's why I don't talk about it a whole lot because I don't really understand it. And I think there's a lot smarter people out there who do understand it. But I think Celebrations is a great set and I think the fact that it is relatively cheap and still at a price point now uh, where it's been stagnant for the past couple of years is great for the game I think it's great for the hobby uh, when you look at stuff in the past I was perusing through old posts and old things like that uh, and I'm looking at Dragon's Exalted boxes that I sold and Team Rocket Packs first edition Team Rocket Packs that I sold in 2016 for $50 and uh, Fossil Packs that I sold in 2015 for $50 things were very very slow uh, very organic as far as growth goes from uh, 2000, 1999, all the way up until 2015, 2016, you had bumps for sure, uh, but they moved much slower. So when you're looking at things from like, well, I shouldn't have bought Celebrations because it, it, it didn't blow up overnight or it didn't blow up over two years or three years like what we've seen from Evolving the Skies, I just think, you look at uh, Evolutions, for example. Evolutions was, I mean, you couldn't give Evolutions booster boxes away for the first few years of the set. People were sick of opening it. And yeah, there's a whole good, good mindset of uh, nostalgia and things like that when it comes to cracking evolutions because it all is the base artwork and uh, the whole reliving childhood days and you open it up and there's not a whole lot of cards in that set that you can really pull that are going to give you the value of even what you paid for a pack like the, the evolutions booster pack sells for what 20 to 25 dollars and you can pull a couple cards that are worth more than 20 to 25 dollars but at the best you're going to uh, have double the pack value and that's 
pretty much it. Uh, when you look at evolutions, it didn't really skyrocket until the whole pandemic started and things got absolutely nuts then. So when I look at celebrations, I think, uh, be patient. Like, give it, give it a long time. When I'm watching these uh, content creators who are recording about celebrations not, not performing uh, the way and it was a mistake that they made, I, I don't know if it necessarily was. Maybe it's just a late bloomer. I don't know. You guys probably know. Some of you probably know way more than I do about that. But I'm going to talk about evolutions in today's video uh, because I think it's a good set. And I think it's a really fun set to open. I think it's going to be a fun set to open for a very, very long time. Uh, first of all, I want to shout out, this is Roseanne's Research. I'm not affiliated with Roseanne's Research at all. I don't even know who runs this account. Uh, but if you're on Twitter, Roseanne's Research is just a fun page to follow because they go through a lot of stories, a lot of things in the Pokemon TCG. I've never talked to them before. <laughs> they probably have no idea who I am or what I'm even doing. Uh, but this is, they did a, a, the reason that I hold, I thought about this video to begin with was they did a whole segment on explaining the Celebrations cards, the 25 cards in the Celebrations Classic Collection that that were reprinted in celebrations the actual set and why they were uh, put that way and then they also did some theory mining about what should be in the 30th anniversary set if for some reason pokemon decides to do 30 cards in the 30th an uh, anniversary set we have no idea what pokemon's going to do so this is just all speculation things like that but going over individually uh and some great information some really cool things like this is just a clay doll right here obviously a very cheap card but understanding uh the 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 format and understanding the reason why it was printed and they go through all of this this entire thread of why Claydol was such a big thing in the competitive format. And it's really, like, this is a, a fun rabbit hole that you can go down if you want to learn more about the competitive game or why these cards were really big back in the day. Uh, and it, it's just a lot of fun uh, to kind of look through. So if you don't follow Roseanne's research on Twitter, I highly recommend it. Go check out their page. Uh, just because they put a lot of great information and they go through the story, which obviously you guys know I'm all about the story uh, of what these Pokemon cards do or what they have have done uh, and why they might have been reprinted or printed in that celebration set to begin with. Uh, I'm going to lower my face here because I am way too high up uh, compared to the prices here. But we're going to look at some car, uh, some seal product uh, from celebrations and a couple other things too that I put into the presentation just to kind of go through uh, what's been going on with celebrations. Because if you look at a product like the Ultra Premium Collection, I think a lot of people just got sick of paying so much for an Ultra Premium Collection. This was uh, obviously an in-demand product that a lot of people wanted. It was kind of the first introduction of these metal cards with the Pikachu and the Charizard, and it was very hard to find uh, when you compare it to other releases around the same time, like the Elite Trainer Box and other Celebrations products were fairly easy to find, but the Ultra Premium Collection was very difficult. It had that high price tag of $120 for MSRP, uh, and it seemed low stock everywhere you went, uh, and there was lines of people still who were, who were literally lining up outside of a Target, outside of a Walmart, waiting for restocks to happen, and it just came out at a completely different time, and we saw the Ultra Premium Collection from Celebrations jump up over $400. You're looking at the last year here. The last year, uh, a set like Celebrations the Ultra Premium Collection, which was expected to just continue to increase in price, lose over 10% of its value. So closer to 15% of its value. Uh, but in July of 2023, it was selling for $404.28. That was its one-year high. That's like its all-time high. And it was relatively consistent at that point for the next few months. Uh, but then in October of 2023 is when things started to fall down. And when I sit here and I watch people talk about investing in Pokemon cards and, and how celebrations didn't work out the way that they wanted it to, we also have to remember the whole idea of Pokemon card investing was very bloated during the pandemic. So during the release of this time, so the amount of people who were out there who were probably storing products, probably putting things away in storage or maybe locking things up in their basement somewhere, uh, they probably bought a ton of these. There was probably a lot of these that were out there that were kept sealed uh, because a lot of people back then weren't just buying it to open it. They were buying it with the idea that I'm going to sell this in a few years, three to five years. And now here we are getting to that three year point. And while it is higher than that $120 MSRP, like it is, it is three times that price. That's still, that's still a huge investment increase if you look at it from that mindset. The population of a product that is still sealed uh, is also going to impact uh, demand because supply impacts demand a lot. So if there's a lot of supply out there, obviously demand is going to get fulfilled. And if it's constantly a race to the bottom because people are hopping out of the hobby because they're looking at getting into something else that might produce them a quicker return, uh, then you're going to start seeing some of these products start to drop. And I think a lot of people are focusing on other products. Now, the great thing about Celebrations, it does come with uh, a, a slew of different Sword and Shield era products. Not really any of those alternate art uh, booster packs. Unfortunately, it's more the front half of Sword and Shield for the most part, uh, which I think deteriorates 
value a little bit in this product, but there's still a good variety. And then you have the Celebrations booster packs as well, uh, but also some other cool products that are in the 25th anniversary Celebrations Ultra Premium Collection. And if you look, uh, dropping about 10% down to 354.02, and it could continue to fall. And I think that's okay. That is okay uh, because you have to be looking at Celebrations. I think in my mind, like you look at it in a long game, you look at it very long because it is going to be a fun set for people to open. And the whole idea of it being cost effective for people to open the set, I think is only a good thing because uh, I mean, that's just going to continue to decrease supply and things like that. And also get more people interested in the hobby because they're seeing the stories and they're enjoying the hobby uh, rather than just focusing on the money thing. So I think it's okay to see some things uh, start depreciating in value. I don't think that's, that, that's bad uh, for the hobby at all. I, th- I don't think that, I think that's good. I don't think it's bad for investing at all. If that's your cup of tea, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either. Here's the metal Charizard. This is included in the Celebrations Ultra Premium Collection. Again, I could be way off base. Like I said, a lot smarter people when it comes uh, to Pokemon card investing. I know a lot about the business side of things. I know a lot about running a storefront. Uh, but when it comes to the idea of holding things long term, it's just not something that I'm very knowledgeable with at all. And I will never pretend that I am. Uh, you can see the metal Charizard right here starting to tick upwards a little bit in August of 2023, but then started falling back down. It was at 127.50 at one point in time. Remember, for a long time, this was not being graded uh, by the big grading companies. It was not being graded by PSA or CGC. And then we saw quite a bit of an increase when CGC and PSA started reopening the idea of grading these metal cards. Uh, they do chip very easily. They don't have great condition all the time because they shuffle around inside the Ultra Premium Collection. Uh, and because of that, a lot of nines that are out there. We'll look at that in just a second here. But uh, obviously losing a lot of value, losing like 35, 40% of value over the past year. You can see it dropped all the way down in May to a one-year low of $84.25. It's risen back up a little bit, $88.27 currently. Uh, but every time an Ultra Premium Collection uh, gets cracked open, another one of these Metal Charizards uh, hits the market and possibly gets graded. If you look at the amount of cards that are graded, really not that much when you compare it to the Van Gogh Pikachu or you compare it to uh, some of the other cards, even in Celebrations or in every set, some of the alternate arts as well, only 8,000 copies that have been graded. And if you look at the differential here uh, between PSA 10 and PSA 9, it is absolutely insane. And that's why the PSA 10 does command such a higher premium price point uh, 8,009 that have been graded, 422 of them have been graded in PSA 10, which is absolutely insane. 5,163 have gotten a PSA 9. But if you look at only only 422 that have been graded in PSA 10, that's insane. Uh, the price point has fallen quite a bit, though, for the PSA 10. You can see $1,525. So that's still way higher uh, if you look at the price point of the current market for Charizard. The metal one currently selling for about $88.27. If it does get a PSA PSA 10, it commands a huge, huge premium. $1,525 is still a huge uh, increase as far as price point goes. However, uh, like I said, it is much cheaper than where it was even you know six months ago. It was much, much higher, not too long after PSA and CGC reopened grading for these metal cards. Here's the metal Pikachu right here, also in the Celebrations Ultra Premium Collection, July of 2023. This was sitting at $54.57. Again, another set that's lost about 40, or another card that's lost about 40% of its value in April of 2020. It fell all the way down to $31.36. It has started ticking up a little bit, uh, but still sitting at $36.03. So not too much of an increase. It's about 20% above where it was a couple of months ago, uh, but still way off of its $54.57 one-year high. Here is the metal Pikachu right here. Even less of a population when it comes to PSA 10s. 5,765 that have been graded, which is still uh, not a small number by any means, but not not large when you compare it to a lot of other cards that have been graded. Uh, And again, I think part of that too is just because not as many ultra premium collections have been opened as what you'll see from a lot of like the EV uh, evolutions premium collection boxes or the obviously Charizard UPC which there was a ton of them that were opened $860 for a PSA 10 is the going rate not as many bids on this one only four uh, but $860 uh, so still quite a big premium that is uh, commanded if if it does grade a PSA 10 you can see going from $36.03 uh, you grade it get a 10 $860 seems to be the going rate of it right now but only 228 of those 5,765 have been graded in the PSA 10 which is absolutely insane here's the celebrations uh, elite trainer box this is just a normal one the normal variant which you probably picked up at target or maybe you bought online this was scalped like crazy before the set even released selling for about $75 as a pre-order a lot of companies were doing things where they were bundling it together uh, maybe that would give you a better pricing deal or things like that we had giant reprints right around the time of the release of celebrations uh, we had reprints of 
uh, Darkness Ablaze and Vivid Voltage and additional waves of Evolving Skies and Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike was just about to come out. So there was a lot of products. It was overload of supply when it came to Pokemon cards. Um, because of that, uh, Celebrations ETBs have really not moved a whole lot since release. If you could find it at MSRP or close to MSRP, obviously your goal is going to always be to buy a sealed product under MSRP. If you can do that, if you can buy booster boxes for $90, if you can buy uh, ETBs for $30, $40, somewhere around there, especially the special uh, ETBs like Celebrations, then you're going to do fine. You're not going to lose money by any means. You might not gain uh, 10x overnight like what we've seen before with Evolving Skies, but uh, you're not going to necessarily lose money. So that's why it's such an important goal to not FOMO and not give into those giant pre-order prices if they ever do come back and happen again. But in September of 2023, this was sitting at $84.67. Hasn't lost a ton. It did lose about 15% of its value up until May of 2024. That's when it dropped down to $71.18, but it has gained a little bit of that back, sitting at $77.17 currently. So still off of its one-year high. It has been trending downward over the past couple of years. Uh, But again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Here's the Ultra... uh, Here's the Elite Trainer Box, the Pokemon exclusive one. This one is not done as well. And again... Another product that has been trending down over the past couple of years, but still, when you factor in that you probably paid uh, fifty dollars for something like this, uh, it's still double what you paid for it over the past few years, which isn't bad at all. In August of 2023, it was selling for one twenty one eighty eight. Uh, trended downward very, very quickly in January of 2023. It was all the way down to one hundred and two dollars and eighteen cents. So it's lost about twenty percent of its value over the course of six months. Then it did start to go up a little bit before trending back downward, sitting at one hundred five fifty four currently. Uh, so still well off of its one-year high. Here's the Celebrations Loose Booster Pack, and this is always a good indicator of how a set does, uh, because these are mostly getting opened. If people are buying booster packs, uh, you're not collecting an art set of Celebrations because they are all the same artwork. So watching something like this trend in the upward direction should be encouraging uh, to somebody who's looking at Celebrations. Uh, You can see in October of 2023, it was selling for $5.77, which really isn't that much above MSRP. You factor these in at about $4.99 for MSRP because you buy a Celebration Elite Trainer Box. You get 10 of these in that Celebrations Elite Trainer Box. You get additional booster packs as well, uh, but the mindset is always uh, right around $5 for MSRP on this. Probably a little bit less when you factor in the other goodies that you get. Uh, But trending in the upward direction, you can see at one point in time it was up to $7.24. So that alone tells you that an ETB is worth at least $72 based off of the fact that it has 10 of these in it plus additional booster packs in it. Currently sitting at $6.84, which is quite high uh, compared to where it was in October of 2023. You're still looking at over 20% growth over the past year, which I think is a very good indicator of the set's performance and how much people enjoy opening this set. Here's the... (laughs) This thing is so weird. Uh, This is the giant figure collection that uh, Pokemon came out with. This was such a pain to ship. Uh, We got a lot of these. I remember how many of these came out. There was a ton. Only about 10% fluctuation over the past year. A lot of peaks and valleys on this one. July of 2023, it was selling at a one-year high of $68.14. Lost about 10% of its value over the next couple months. uh, Then gained it back uh, back up to about $68, and now it's lost it back. So it's sitting at $62.76 currently. Continue to see ups and downs. The problem with this one is uh, it does cost a lot to ship. You're looking at a big, bulky product, so you're probably looking at $10 plus to ship. Uh, so selling for basically MSRP plus shipping right now, uh, which is where it's been at for the past three years. Here's the Lance's Charizard V. This one came out in two different variants. It was the Charizard V and the Sylveon V. If you have uh, a case of these, you would have three Lance's Charizard V and three Sylveon V. A lot of people find found these at Walmarts even a couple years after the release of Celebrations because there was so many of them printed. Uh, but the Lance's Charizard V is obviously going to be the more popular one between the this one and the Dark Sylve- Sylveon one. And this one is going to continue to do well uh, over a long time. In November of 2023, it was sitting at $30.35. Gained about 30% over the next couple months. Jumped up to $39.76. Now it's been roughly level, uh, about 5% below where it was in December of 2023. Sitting at $37.27 currently. Here's the Pikachu V Union box. Uh, There's also a Playman variant of this that I think was only included in Target stores. Uh, In September of 2023, this was sitting at a one-year low of $33.94, but then gained again 30% basically overnight. December of 2023, it was selling for $41.38. So lost about 10% of that uh, from where it was in December, sitting at $38.99 currently, Uh, but this one not doing too bad uh, as far as the celebrations products go. Here's the collector's chest. This This was a really interesting product because it released at targets for 
uh, a, a while before it got released to everywhere else. It got uh, there was some kind of manufacturer error or something with it, and because of that, it started out super expensive because you could only find them at Targets, and a lot of times it got bought up and then resold on the secondary market. But then eventually it hit like three or four months later after when it was supposed to hit, uh, and because of that, it's just been all over the place ever since release. In December of 2023, it was selling at a one-year low of $35 and 20 cents, uh, gained about 20 percent uh, of value since then. So it's gone up quite a bit. Now it was a lot higher in July of 2023. So it lost a lot over the span of a few months, uh, but it's been trending upward ever since December of 2023, sitting at $41.94 currently, which is just off of its one-year high of $42. Here's the Dragapult Prime Collection box. This one's also very interesting because it does have a $15 MSRP price tag on it. You don't get a whole lot in it, but you do get a binder in it, which is very, very heavy. Uh, the binder causes the Dragapult Prime Collection box to be expensive to ship. You're looking at like $8 to $10. And because of that, uh, not easy for a lot of storefronts to ship and sell uh, even close to MSRP uh, and because of that it's been all over the place and it doesn't sell extremely well in July of 2023 it was selling for $27.47 that was its one year high it's pretty much gone down all of the past year it's fallen all the way down to $23.04 currently which is just off of its one year high of tw or one year low of $22.89 and I think the last one uh, last seal product that we're going to look at is the Zacian collection box uh, it's got that really cool surfing Pikachu pin in there uh, the flying it, it, like a, the pin like turns around it's really really cool uh but trending downward for the majority of 2023 you can see in february of 2024 it hit that one year low of 33 dollars and 76 cents but only about 10 percent difference between its one year high and one year low you can see it's one year high in july at 36 dollars and 61 cents lost about 10 percent of the value but now it's gained most of that back sitting at 35 dollars and 73 cents currently here's the big card that you can pull out of the booster packs and this is also another reason why i think celebrations will do fine long term because you still have the original base set artwork uh you do have that stamp in there which i think a lot of people didn't really like when pokemon first came out but it's, it's a nice identifier of the set uh in july of 2023 this card was selling for 88 dollars and six cents uh dropped down quite a bit in march it fell down to 63 dollars and 90 cents started trending back up uh jumped over 80 dollars close to that 85 dollar price point in may but we saw that happen with a lot of pokemon cards in debt in general now it's retraced a little bit sitting at 73 dollars and three cents currently you look at the amount of graded cards for the base set artwork uh charizard that you can pull in celebrations 29,000. 850. So we talked before about the metal Charizard and the uh, metal Pikachu that were graded. 8,000 copies of the Charizard, 5,000 copies of the Pikachu. Uh, this is almost 30,000 copies right here. So a lot more of this card graded. And because of that, uh, the price point, not as big of a premium. You can see the PSA 10 selling for about $152. Uh, the, the raw copy uh, selling for about 73. So it's still about double the price, which is a fair premium right there. Uh, not too bad, but $152. Uh, 19900 19,294 PSA 10 copies in existence. That's a lot. There's a lot of them out there um, because of that, that brings that premium down uh, a little bit, but still almost 30,000 copies graded. So still a lot of room on those metal cards. Uh, but again, another situation where I think a lot of people just aren't selling them or aren't opening up the ultra premium collection because people want it sealed instead. So uh, celebrations, in my opinion, not bad. Still a really cool set. A lot of fun to open. And I'm glad packs uh, aren't terribly expensive. Like what you see from Evolving Skies. Evolving Skies right now, to open up an Evolving Skies pack and pay $12, $13 is very, very difficult to do because chances are you're not going to pull anything. The great thing about celebrations is, yeah, you only get four cards in the pack, uh, but pull rates are absolutely amazing. The story that goes along with it, obviously you can look at those on Roseanne's research as well if you're not familiar with them, but very, very cool stories, uh, which is why they were reprinted in that 25th anniversary set to begin with hope you enjoyed the content if you did uh please hit that subscribe button down below leave a like leave a comment obviously it goes a long way for the algorithm thank you guys for everything i love you uh, i will talk to you again tomorrow Till next time peace